Okay, everybody. So I am gone today, as I mentioned yesterday. This is a video that's just going to kind of go over what's on the quiz, uh, along with some expectations for what to expect in the future. Um, make sure you watch this whole video because I'm going to talk about some things that you need to know for the quiz. First thing I want to do is just give you a chance to take a look at some of these answers. I will talk through these, but feel free to pause if you need to look at some of these. So for our first ones, we're going to draw a valid conclusion from these statements. The biggest thing here is that we're looking at this part of the statement where we have this if then statement. So if she takes the bus, then she'll be on time for work. And then we know that that if part was true. Since that if part was true, we know that then part is true. So she will be on time for work. Same thing here. If I don't wear a sweater, I'll get cold. I didn't wear a sweater. Therefore, I will get cold or I got cold, something like that. The, the whole idea here, we talked about this yesterday in class. If, the, if we end up finding out that the first part, the if part is true, then we know that the then part is true. That's, you know, kind of seems almost stupid, um, but it's that very basic building block of, of logic. Like you have a statement, if this, then that, and the first part is true, the second part is true. That's what the statement means. Part two, uh, decide if each is true or false. If it's false, you need to disprove it. If it's true, you need to prove it. So an isosceles triangle cannot be a right triangle. That is false because I can draw one. There it is. That is a right isosceles triangle. You provide one counter example, you've disproven it. If a figure has four sides, it must be a parallelogram. That is false because I drew one that's not a parallelogram. That's a trapezoid. C is a little harder. If a triangle has side lengths of three inches and five inches, then the third side must be less than eight inches. That one is true. Uh, if you think about this, the third side, if that third side was less than eight inches, sorry, I worded that weird. If the third side is more than eight inches, then the two shorter sides aren't going to reach. And I can draw you a picture that kind of shows that. So if this is, we'll just say this is nine, then my three and my five won't reach. Nine is too long for three and five to reach and make a triangle. Then number three, this is talking about that idea of, again, what does it take to prove or disprove a statement? So we have the statement, all cards in the deck had, e all red cards in the deck had an even number. If we find a blue card, it doesn't matter what's on the back. Our statement was only about red cards. So that doesn't do anything for us. Um, if we find a card with a seven on it that was red, well, that is a counter example. As we thought all red cards had even numbers, we found a red card with an odd number. That's a disprove. Then the last one, this one's really important. If the next three cards that she picks up were red and had even numbers, that supports our conjecture, but it does not prove it. We can't prove something using more inductive reasoning. Um, so that one's a neither. You could say it supports it, but it does not prove it. Okay, that's, that's kind of a big one. That, that's tricky for a lot of people to kind of get their head around that one. Okay, now one thing, last thing I want to do here is talk about what is on the quiz and just go over some examples. You're going to get a review sheet. I hopefully gave you the review sheet on Wednesday before I was gone, so you should already have that. If you don't have it, um, the sub should have it. Um, I'm going to put it in the black box on the side of the room, so if you're looking at this on the smart board, it's over there on the side of the room. Um, open that up to today, which is Thursday, and you should see the extras of those if you were gone on Wednesday. So I want on this quiz for you to be able to tell me the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning, following patterns, finding rules for the nth term, doing some basic deductive reasoning. I'm not expecting a lot out of this. Um, and then visual reasoning, be able to draw a picture. So we're not going to do all of those, but I do want to do a couple of quick examples. The first one being, what's the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning? If there's one key word I want you to know with inductive reasoning, it is patterns. Anytime you are following a pattern, you are using inductive reasoning. The other thing I want you to know about inductive reasoning is that you can't prove things. You can come up with a conjecture, but you can't prove something is true using only inductive reasoning. You can get really pretty sure that it's going to work, but you can't prove it. With deductive reasoning, the thing that you're looking at is logic and known truths is kind of the word we like to say. So you're, you're allowed to use logic, like if, if this is true, then this is true, and you're allowed to use things that we know as fact. 
Um, this is the one that you can can prove things with. This is how mathematicians prove that things are true about the world. Next up, we've got nth term rules. So you are going to see, you know, just like what we've seen, I'll draw a quick example here. Um, you got n and you got your term. And so it might say, you know, okay, one, two, three, four, and then I'll ask for five, 10, and the rule for the nth term, right? Note that I'm going to skip there. That's a big important thing. So for example, if I said, okay, here we got three, four, five, six. The biggest thing I want you to remember here is that we are not just writing the rule from one term to the next. It is you know, super important if you can see that that's plus one, plus one, plus one, that's great, but it is not n plus one. Right? That repeated addition shows up as our multiplication part of our rule. In this case, we also have an addition part because if I just look at, for example, this one, one times two is two. Right? If I take that times one, I get two. And then what do I still have to add or subtract to get to four? Well, I have to add two to it. So my, my rule there is one n plus two. You're also going to see rules that end up being just multiplying. So if I have n in my term, one, two, three, four, five, skip a little bit, 10, skip a bunch, n. So if I had something like, uh, let's go with 4, 8, 12, 16. So this time, I'm still looking at my, my common differences. If you see the rule ahead of time, that's great. But here I see, okay, I'm adding 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 plus 4 is 16. So I know that I've got a 4n because that's my common difference. And this time, if we go in and check it, right, if I take my number and I multiply by 4, I get 16. Well, I'm already there. Just multiplying by 16 was enough. I didn't have to do anything else. And then kind of the most complicated one that I really want everybody to be able to do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, and it will really all look like that, I promise. So if I had something like... I'm going to keep this pretty straightforward. If I had 4, 9, 14, 19, like that. So here, you can see if I, if I look at what my common difference is each time, 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 plus 5 is 14, 14 plus 5 is 19. So I know I have a 5n. My next one will be 25, by the way. And then I look at this and say, well, is that it? Let's just do three as an example. If I do my multiplication step of multiplying by five, I get 15, but I want 14. What do I have to either add or subtract to adjust? Well, 15 minus one gives me 14. So I know I need a minus one. Then I can go back and use my rule. If I do five times 10 minus one, that's 50 minus one is 49. So that's my term, my rules for the nth term. That's kind of the what I expect everybody to be able to do. On the review sheet, you're going to see there's some of those rectangle numbers. Uh, with those rectangle numbers, really focus on finding a, a pattern in the length and finding a pattern in the width. Uh, you know, they're the challenging ones, but I do hope that I can get a few of you to be able to, to figure those out. The last thing here is our deductive reasoning. Um, this is what we talked about yesterday. So our, our big things here are being able to draw some logical conclusions based on statements. Um, so for example, one of the, the classic ways to do this is I give you two, two true statements and you have to draw a conclusion. So I could say something like, if it is Thursday, school gets out early. And then another true statement, it is Thursday. The big key to these whole things is we have this first statement that goes, if something happens, then something else happens. And we also know that the first part of that statement is true. Well, if the first part of that statement is true, then the second part of our statement is true. 
So we make the conclusion, this is the fancy symbol for conclusion, that school gets out early. This, this other thing that we know true, we have to know the first statement is true. I'm going to give you an example of one that, that doesn't work. All right? Let's do the same exact statement. If it is Thursday, we get out early. We got out early. So the question there is, does that mean that it's Thursday? And no, that is not a valid conclusion that we can draw. Because we don't know if it's Thursday. We only know the then part. There might have been some other reason we got out. You know, so I'm going to write that out. There might be another reason. Right? Maybe it is Monday, but the power went out and we got out early. Or maybe it's Wednesday, but it snowed and we got out early. We can't conclude that it's Thursday just because we got out early. It doesn't work backwards. And then the final thing here, I didn't do this one yesterday, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what this looks like. All of the algebra you did last year is also deductive reasoning. You use things that you knew you were allowed to do to be able to draw a conclusion about an equation. Now, there were some, some very simple things that you were allowed to do with equations, your known truths. So just as an example, your known truths about equations are you can add or subtract to both sides. You can multiply or divide on both sides. And you are allowed to simplify, which means distribute slash combine terms. Those are your known truths of algebra. There are more. We'll get to those later. But with those known truths, you can sh explain why this equation has a solution of x equals 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. My first step I would do here is I would use the distributive property. So because this statement is true, I know that, oops, I know that this statement is true. And I know that because of the distributive property. Distribute. Then I could add 15 to both sides. And I would get the equation 6x equals 12. Because I add to both sides. And then I can divide by 6 on both sides, and I know that x equals 2, because I'm allowed to divide on both sides. And so I have just successfully proved that x equals 2. That's algebra. That's how you use deductive reasoning. Right? We've provided a reason, a known truth for why we were allowed to do everything, and we eventually proved the thing that we are trying to prove. We'll do geometry proofs this year, but that's just a really quick example of how you've actually already done quite a bit of deductive reasoning. So tomorrow on the test or on the quiz, I intentionally wrote it to be pretty short. It is, I'm gonna give you half an hour, which means in a 50 minute class, I'm gonna give you the first 15 or 20 minutes, depending on how much you want to ask questions. You will have access to the answer key to the review today with the sub. I'll make sure it's put up on Canvas so that you can check as you go. But tomorrow, I'll give you a chance to ask some questions about anything that you weren't sure about yesterday. And then we will move on and take the quiz um, in the last half hour of class. So I will see you tomorrow. Make sure you come to class with questions because that 15 minutes is only going to happen or work if we have questions.